Hi, today I would like to introduce you a new friend. His name is Luis Campos. Hello, Luis. how are you, Antonio? Thank you for having me. Author of uh, a blog called No Way, No Self. Very happy to talk to you. I really Thank was you. Um, curious about ordinariness, human, uh, this human comp component of the, of the thing. Yeah. I think a lot of people, um, when I was seeking enlightenment, I thought that this was about somehow becoming non-human, you know, to not allow the things that are painful to be let in. And then I realized after many years that that had to be let in. There was, all, there was only the freedom that I talk about and write about has to invite everything in, even the most painful, even the most identified, even the most... Um, vulnerable even the most uncomfortable even the things that we think we cannot bear are allowed because if not then there's something that happens in spirituality where there's something that's not allowed and then there's this sense of self-correction which therefore then brings up the character of self again so in my experience everything is allowed but to see it as part of the experience of being a human being because no matter what we say about this we can say i am consciousness or i am awareness which i don't believe that that's what we are i believe that what we are is completely impossible to know but the human component is the one that's describing that everyone that we've heard talk about this could say that i am consciousness or i am awareness but it's all being told through a human filter and we think sometimes to avoid certain painful things, we think that we should become a character called consciousness, or we become a character called awareness, or spirit, or God. But what's happening is that's kind of a turning away of our humanity. And that, to me, doesn't seem necessary or even possible. I think it's another type of illusion, in a sense. Mm. This this uh, really resonates and uh, it really leaves me with the mystery. Yeah, I always tell people that they know a lot more than I know because the way I live this is if we're really truly vulnerable with ourselves, it's beautiful because we don't know anything. We're always in wonder and it's an absolute mystery that this is happening. But to put a label on it, seems a huge injustice because how can we describe what this is? You know, this thing that we never seem to be a part of that we've claimed to be a part. How could we know what that is? And how could one tiny little microscopic grain of sand know what this is? And to me, it, it does it a great injustice to claim it as consciousness or awareness because it seems cheap. This is such a gift that it can't be anything. And it is everything. There seems to be uh, a, a, what we call a present moment, but I can't even find the present moment. That's how mysterious this is. Because where, as soon as we say present moment, we're out of the present moment. This that's happening is always present, but we can't find present moment. We can't find time. We can't find anything. All we can find is this is it, and what that is is impossible to identify. The only thing that identifies is this concept of self. This concept that I'm subject and that's object and we subject object all day. That's kind of the conversation that we're having with ourselves all day is subject, object, separation, subject, object, separation. But in our lived sense, you know, there is no division. There's no, it's seamless. It's perfectly integrated. It's one whole thing, never missing a beat. It's always on time. Your website is called No Way, No Self. Yeah, and people think that what I'm saying is to let go of the self. What I'm saying is once you check in with your direct experience, you won't find a self. There is no self available. There's no self that dies. There's no ego that dies. There is none of that. When that is seen through, then you're in this, what's been, always been happening, and it is quite ordinary. It doesn't have the qualities that people were selling me in spirituality like enlightenment or awakening or anything like that. I experience 
moments of awakening and enlightenment, but those were experiences. What this is doesn't have experiences. This has never had an experience. It's what allows experience to occur. So when you mean no self, you mean uh, no separate self, as sometimes it is called, and no uh, self as consciousness. I don't like to use the word consciousness because to me the word consciousness doesn't make sense. But what I mean by no self is that when we really look in our direct experience, which is what I always ask people to do, mm. to not use any spiritual teachings, and everybody that I've come in contact with can't find a self. So that's what I'm talking about. And we can't really find a separation. We want separation. Separation can only happen in the mind. And the mind, my mind, has been so untrustworthy untrust that I no longer rely on it as being the indicator of truth. I just kind of go with my direct experience. And I also just let the mind do what it wants to do. Okay. So it's a... Uh because uh, I, I was curious about this self, because sometimes self is uh, referred as consciousness, so... I don't mean the self with the big S. Yeah. I mean little self, the self that feels that something's a problem, the okay. self that, and I don't even believe in the big S self, because that's just another concept for self. Um, it's, you know, now it's made, it creates this hierarchy and this division, and in my experience, there is no division except in the mind. Yeah. And the mind is a tool to function in this matrix, but it's not, it's not everything that it's cracked up to be in a sense because it's not reliable. It doesn't, everything that I've thought of has not been true. I've never had a true thought. I've only had an experience of self through thought. So you would say that mind is like a filter that uh, organizes the space? Mind is, um, mind is a filter, but it's also a, a type of compulsion because of the way we live. We've, we've been, we grew up to glorify the mind and make it the, the I am, the center of what we are. Mm. And it's just, you know, we don't say I am lungs, right? You don't say I am my heart or I am my ears. But we say, you know, we believe in self that we are a mind because that's the only thing that's available to self is a mind. And then it feels because Antonio can't have that experience of my mind, then it must be real. But that's not real. It's completely unreliable. It's, it's like daydreaming. So there is, a, can we say that there is Antonio's mind and uh, Louis mine or it's an illusion mind can only talk about things in separation so in the world of mind yes but you know I can't tell you what that is I don't know if there is an Antonio's mind or a Louis mind all I can tell you is that there's thoughts indicating that mm. and that's the direct experience of it I don't when I think about Antonio's mind or my mind, in this experience, it doesn't feel separate. It appears as a thought. That's the honest, that's my honest answer. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like it's true. It just feels like a thought, like any other thought. I just lost, um, I just stopped believing in my thoughts and not that, some thoughts don't grab me and make me feel very identified at times. Or sometimes I get angry, but I can, there's a sense of ease about it now where I just don't trust it all the way. Even when something feels very identified, there's something in me that says, I just don't believe this all the way. So you say there is no awakening, there is no enlightenment and awakening enlightenment are experiences there is, there is experience, right, mm -hmm. that one can recall and say, I awoke or I had enlightenment. But in a sense, that's kind of the beginning of this. This is kind of like, um, for some people, it's not necessary, but for some people, they need to have that experience so they can see what this actually is. Because some people, 
um, are very identified like I was. And I believe that that awakening, now I look back on that and nothing had really happened. But to the character, that was something very real. You know, it seemed like I had awoken. It seemed for a period of time that I was enlightened. And then as I started to be with that and really be very, very honest with myself in a humbling way, there was nobody that got enlightened. There was nobody that had ever awoken. It was just another dream for the character of self. So it's awakening is like a, it's like a change in perspective. From yeah, it's like a... Uh, to seeing the reality as it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that we could ever say that we reality as it is. There is no reality as it is because we still have a filter on it called, you know, the human filter of self or mind. Like you said before, mind is a type of filter. What this is, is a lived thing. We can't really talk about it and we can't really know it, but we can, we can experience that in a very direct moment. But as soon as we say we had an experience of it, it's not, that's not the directness of it. So talking to you, it seems that awakening, uh, it's not that awakening uh, does not exist, but it's not that awakening is not some, something so extraordinary as it is uh, often uh, uh, talked about in spiritual circles. It's, um, people think that the awakening is like an end point, right? We mm. awaken and then everything changes. And to a certain degree, something has changed. What that is, I can't tell you what that is, but something has changed in that awakening. But the, in a sense, that's the beginning, not the end. We're just barely approaching the very beginning of what this is right now. And awakening is not, um, it's just an experience for the character to understand that there is no such thing as experience or there is no such thing as self and all there is is this freedom that I write about. Mm. I would even, I felt very sure that there was an awakening for many, many years and I lived from that place and, and what I realized is that place had a lot of suffering in it still. I was still very identified I've talked to Joey a lot about this a little bit that I, I say, you know, if I walked around telling people that I was enlightened, I'd be miserable because I would have to be this one thing all the time. And this that I am is uncontainable. It's unknown. And it's, it has so much to offer in that freedom and vulnerability that I can't imagine wanting it to be something small like enlightenment. Enlightenment is a very, very small little tiny thing in comparison to what this is. And what that is, I can't possess that. The character that I play in this world can't possess what this is because there is no character. There's a collection of thoughts and memories called character and I play that so people know that I'm different from Antonio or Joey or whoever. It's just a tool. So would you say that is it uh, does does it make sense to to look for awakening well i always tell people when they say you know i want to i want to wake up what i say what do you want to wake up to what do you think you're going to get because that's more information for the character to carry around. Do you need that type of luggage? But most of the time, the reason why we want to wake up is because we're afraid. We're afraid that this might be it and there's no getting out of it. And that's my invitation that maybe this is it. So you, it's like uh, realizing that you can't escape the actual the experiencing the experience that is going on right now i can't escape now 
being here sitting talking to a computer <laughs> and, <laughs> and Luis. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like it's like your desire to interview me. Where did that come from? You could say it's Antonio, but it seems like that was just downloaded, right? You just woke up one day and be like, that's the next guy that I'm going to interview and I'm going to sit in front of this computer. But, you know, the real direct experience is we don't really know where that comes from. We don't know. And we could make up a story and say, well, Antonio likes this and that. And, but then, you know, we go back to the whole thing. Where does this all start? Where does it begin? Where does it end? It's a very, very hard thing for the mind to comprehend that there's nothing to comprehend and that maybe that's not its job is to always understand every little thing that's happening. Mm. Is it possible that these uh, CDs, what you say, that it's not, it's not so, it's, it's not something so special, can also uh, evoke a joy release It, it, for me, when I stopped getting so serious about it, it seems that I was in more, I suffered less. And that's why I offer this so freely because it seems to have a great impact on people when they finally rest that this is fine. This is totally okay. It's allowed. And we're not the character that, that can choose this. This is happening without our permission. And when we rest in that, Even some things that can be quite difficult are actually a little bit easier, it appears to be that way. Because the suffering that we all experience happens in the sense that we could choose something other than what's happening. That's why we suffer so much. You know? So we take the, the thing about awakening or enlightenment and we think that that's going to solve the problem, and that's actually another form of suffering. Yes. To want <clears throat> to want to enlighten <clears throat> is another chase. It's like what we've always been doing. We're always trying to change this that doesn't seem like it's right. So no more concepts in your uh, sharing, in your writings. No more concepts like you are consciousness. You are. Yeah, I don't really like talking about stuff like that because when I was spiritually seeking for a long, long time, I would hear people talk about that and it denied me of the experience that I was having because I didn't feel that I was consciousness. So I always felt like I was on the outside. I always felt kind of ostracized, like there was some sort of something wrong with me that I couldn't see what they were seeing, you know? So I would listen to these teachers. And it was always like a painful experience because I wasn't getting it, you yes. know? And my invitation, I think, is quite different um, because it's, what is it like for you? Maybe we don't have to know what Gangaji said or Ramana Maharshi or we don't have to do any of that. Maybe we could just be with our direct experience. And that to me seems more intimate and more true than trying to live a master's life And I don't really believe in masters. I don't think that anybody mastered anything. I think that's actually impossible. I think it's a title that self gives to self. The phenomenon of a self is labeling itself as something separate, which is not possible. Yes, it can happen that uh, in this uh, enlight awakening, seeking, It can create a lot of suffering. Yeah. Yes. Right. And I come at it from the back end in the sense of I say, somebody says, I want to awaken. I, I ask people, who is it that's going to wake up? Because if somebody could wake up, then there would be a real character, right? That is available to do that. So what's your experience like? What, is, what, is, what do you think this is? What do you think's happening? Because this that I'm talking about is kind of like, it, it, it breaks all these concepts up. So it's like, it's a, like, I don't know, right? I don't know, yes. Yeah. That's, I, the vulnerable, that's the vulnerability I talk about is we don't know. 
This is impossible to know. And it's beautiful that way. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. I can tell you that people like you really resonate and uh, leaving me always with a great, great uh, joy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't experience life in any type of, you know, cause I, when I first started to feel that something had really changed. And once again, that was for a character that I took myself to be, I started contacting teachers and saying, I don't feel this joy that everybody's talking about, you know? And they, you know, I said, it feels quite ordinary. It doesn't feel like joy. And they said, they said to me, and these were people that were kind of well-known, you know, people that if I mentioned them, they would, you know, you, people would recognize them. And they said that that was a very honest thing for me to say, you know, because some people will listen to this and they might be like me and they say, well, I don't experience life as joy. I don't experience it with a sense of ease. What this is can be absolutely anything. It doesn't have a flavor. My life is, in a sense, has less suffering, but it has no particularity to it. It doesn't experience just joy. It doesn't experience happiness or any of those types of things. It's just, it's always a mystery. And there are moments where I feel angry or moments where I do feel joy. And those are very sweet, but really the, the characteristic of it is that I would say it's, I don't know, and I don't suffer as much as I used to. Mm. That's the lived sense of it. That's what it's like to be vulnerable. You know, that's the invitation always is can we be vulnerable with this that's happening right now? Because if we say it's awakening, or if we say it's joy, or we put anything on it, then there's something that feels outside of that all the time. And what this is, is co completely integrated and merged as what is happening. And it can be anything. Being vulnerable to what is happening. Yeah. So it, it also involves being in touch physically with the emotions, sensations. Yeah. And a lot of people get confused because they think that when I tell them to be vulnerable, they think that I'm telling them to go to the story of emotional pain, you know, and that, that is a part of it, but there always seems to be something underneath that story. That's even bigger than that, which I call the eternal heartbreak, which is, this is, it kind of unravels us in a sense. It kind of takes everything that we took ourselves to be just kind of falls apart in that moment. And there's just this huge openness, you know, and tears come or joy or anger, anything can be allowed in that. But the heartbreak always has this, this sense that the heart is breaking open. And then we are completely merged with what's happening. And that happens, uh, that happen, I tell people it has to happen a thousand times, maybe a million times before we start to get a flavor of what that, what's always been happening. This vulnerability that we're afraid to have because we were taught that vulnerability is not acceptable. We thought choice was the right thing that was acceptable. We thought story was acceptable. But there's not a lot of people talking about how important it is to be vulnerable. And uh, do you feel that when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, you also get somehow in touch with something that is outside of this uh, vulnerability, like something that is invulnerable? What do you mean by invulnerable? That cannot be hit, that cannot be uh touched 
that cannot die, that cannot be disturbed? Y yes and no, but it doesn't. I can think about it that way, but I can't, I don't feel it that way. It feels like in a way that I've, um, that I'm home in a way. It doesn't have, it doesn't even, even to call it home is not, it's just, it's just this and this has no way to be identified. It doesn't feel like it's on the outside and it's coming to me and it doesn't feel like it's coming from the inside. It's completely integrated and it's here right now. It's never, it's what allows this to happen. Mm. And that, so, and that is not consciousness. <laughs> what? What allows this to happen is not consciousness. I can't, that would be a disservice to call it consciousness because to me, consciousness is an, is an aspect of experience. Mm. You know, this is what allows every experience, but yet it's never had an experience. If you want to say something about you and, and about how people can follow you, mm -hmm. your writings, your videos, if you are going to travel or to meet you in person, whatever, mm -hmm. wants to, to, whatever you want to tell people to get in touch with you. Um, I have a website called nowaynoself.com. Um, hopefully Antonio will put a link or something to it somewhere. Yes. And people can contact me via email to no way, no self at Gmail. Um, everything that I offer is free. Um, I don't think that this, that we are can be, um, can cost anything. So I don't really charge anybody for what I do. This is just something that wants to happen. And, um, I, you can friend me on Facebook under Lewis Campos. Um, it'll probably have, there's several Lewis Camposes on Facebook, but mine will have a bunch of stuff that says no way, no self. And that'll be me. And you could contact, I post a lot of writing. I do videos. I have a YouTube channel called no way, no self. And that has about 10 or 11 videos. I'll probably post my interview with Antonio once he sends it to me. And I really want to thank you, Antonio. I think that what you're doing is, is beautiful. I feel lucky to be a part of it. Me too. I yeah. feel very lucky to be in touch with you. And I really want to tell you from, from the heart, let's say, that uh, uh, if you want to come to Italy, there are friends waiting for you. Great. I would love to come. Maybe I'll take you up on that. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Talk soon. Yeah, take care. Be well. <laughs>